Mechanical Pros here with Jeff again, back talking about BFDs, and we're going to go over really uh, an overview of BFDs, how to apply them, and how to how to get the most out of your drive. So, Jeff, tell me what we got going on. First thing we want to look at today is proper selection. One of the things that we run into in the field is improper application. So, when we launch these into the field, we want to make sure that we're putting them in an environment that they can live the longest. As we select, when we start looking at our units of measure of how we select, most manufacturers will list that by horsepower and voltage. It's great, it's a unit of selection, but really what we need to be concerned with when sizing a drive electrically, current and voltage. Because you could have the same horsepower at a different RPM and have a higher current, it won't fall within the drive rating. So we have to be careful of that. The other thing that we want to take sure, make sure of is that when we're selecting is making sure that we in, examine our environment, what are we putting the drive into? And basically environmental conditions are going to be one of, or one of at least three uh, ap applications. Dusty, dirty, wet, hot. And so those four, yeah. those four are probably the things that we have to be concerned with when we select drives. Is, is where, where are you going to put the drive? Uh, for access, for maintenance, in conjunction to where the piece of equipment is. Right. Right. And right. that's going to dictate. It's going to dictate uh, where we put them. Yeah. Because we do have code. How you select it. Yeah, code. We still have to. We have, it's it's important for you to to go out and look at your job site, making sure because we do have code. Anytime you have an electrical device, you have to have 36 inches in front of it, plus egress. And so what that means is we want to make sure that from here to our next obstruction obstruction is at least three to four feet. And then what we have to do is we have to go in and say, okay, well, what happens if we ever have to take this drive out? Or we have to maintain this drive, clean the drive. Do we have access 360 degrees around the drive? Yeah. Very important. Yeah. So, but but my, my example is, are you gonna mount to your drive interior, exterior, and if you are, so say you got a cooling tire application or an exterior pump application, right. that's gonna dictate the kind of cabinet you put it in and the kind of type of uh, drive that you're selecting. Absolutely, so, um, absolutely. Gotta, and then length of lead means a lot yeah. too. I mean, if you get outside now, but drive manufacturers have a little bit of leeway there, but most of the time we say 167 feet length of lead output of the drive to the motor. Yeah. You get outside those, we have some other conditions we have to concern ourselves with. But yeah, we have indoor uh, uh, indoor enclosures and we do have outdoor yeah. enclosures. So Jeff, tell me what, what, what's the most important thing to take in consideration when you're when you're selecting a drive? Is making sure that we match it the amperage to the motor. Okay. And then make sure we're matching it to the application. Um, the drives that we have, we're both an industrial and a commercial mm -hmm. application and they are very different. Um, but if it's a fan or pump application, we want to make sure that we get a variable torque drive. Yeah. And then when we match it by current, voltage is number one. If you make a mistake there, these are not a reconnectable device. If you buy a 230 volt drive, get to the site, find out it's 460, we cannot reconnect. So we're going to talk a little bit now about the types of enclosures. Now, the enclosures that come out as standard, and this is pretty, with the Yaskawa, what we do is we break it out to three different standard enclosures, okay? We have what we call IP20, and normally our cubes are what we call IP20. And what that means is that it's touch safe. Anybody that walks up to this drive cannot touch any live part. Now we do have openings over here on the side, and this drive here can be mounted on its own on the wall, and I do have conduit entrances, okay? So this drive here as a standalone will work. This is IP20 and is listed as NEMA 1 as well. So the next example that we have, now this drive here is actually an enclosed bypass with a NEMA 1 enclosure, okay? So if you'll notice, we have the cube that's mounted up on top with the IP20, mm -hmm. and then we have the NEMA 1 enclosure. And how you can tell NEMA 1 enclosures is when you pull the cover off of the drive, you'll see no gasketing. Okay, mm -hmm. and what that means is when uh, NEMA describes NEMA 1 enclosures, they say a reasonable uh, protection against splash or spray. And so reasonable protection is just, okay, I've got to cover over all the conductive parts. Yeah. And so this is our most normal application. Um, we we and, see this primarily in commercial mechanical applications. Yeah, right? mechanical rooms, air handlers, pumps, that type of stuff. Now. When they're applied, these are also, you have to remember, ambient conditions have a lot to do with this too, John. Because if we go into a mechanical room, there are some mechanical rooms that have boilers and other stuff in there that raise the ambient temperature. 
So normally the drives are rated at 40 degrees C. Mm -hmm. And we can size the drive by voltage and current and not have to derate it as long as our room is 40 degrees C. Yeah. Some mechanical rooms that have boilers take you to 50 degrees C. Yeah. And they get very warm. This is the beauty of Yaskawa. If I have a room that we go into and it's got 50 degrees C, I can turn this NEMA 1 enclosure on the IP on the IP20 or on the NEMA 1 bypass and all I have to do is pop this and it doesn't come off very easily. Pop this cover off. It allows temperature to pass through the top and now I can rate this for 50 degrees C. This application here is probably the one that we see the most. Okay. Okay. Now the next application that I wanna talk about is gonna be particulate, okay? We do apply drives into garages, into mm -hmm. very heavy, dusty environments. Yeah. When we start moving into those enclosures, now we have to have a little bit more of a concern because the drive is a, a heat generating device. And so what we have to do is we have to not only understand that we have to, we have to keep the drive cool, but we also have to keep the drive clean. So over here in front, but next to John, is what we call a NEMA 12. Now NEMA 12 is what we call dust type. And the reason why we apply this in garages and that type of stuff is because you get such heavy particulate. Yeah. Car exhaust does go ahead and it will, it will you know, make into a, a much bigger particle and does float around. Yeah. We don't want that to enter into the drive. And the way that you can tell the distance difference between the two is if you'll notice on the door I have rubber gasketing on this door that rubber gasketing will close across the front and won't allow any dust to get in there so now what the, what does that do to our drive okay well our drive is now mounted inside of an enclosure that does not have any exchange of inside air with outside yeah. air and so now what I have to do is I have to extend it out through the back and you can't really see it the way we have it there but basically what happens is this is a heat sink. This is what we use to cool the drive. There's a fan that mounts on top of the drive and that's how we cool the heat sink. And then what we do is we extend that entire heat sink package out the back and that fan is right there. So what we use to cool the drive is external of our NEMA 12 environment. So this keeps the drive clean. It allows us to go ahead and service the drive. It allows us to change the fan yeah. on the drive without yeah. taking the enclosure off. Yeah, you can still get access to that fan. That's still get cool. access to the fan. So it's a it's a it's a very very ingenious design, and yeah. they did a really good job in packaging. Now we can add fan fan and filters to this NEMA 12 and apply it into 50 degree C rooms. Yeah, and so that's another reason why a lot of times we'll use that. So that's what you would do. You just put a muffin fan in here, and you're you're pulling it, you're pushing air out and drawing it through. Drawing air in from yep. the bottom. Yeah. Now the other thing that I want to talk about, and John and and John kind of touched on it, is we do a lot of cooling towers here at MRG, and we package our drives with our cooling towers. Now, this is a whenever you move a drive into the outside, we still have temperature concerns. And so what we do is we move them into a NEMA 3R enclosure. Now they come standard with a fan and filter kit on mm -hmm. them. And then they also have a heater package on the inside to keep the inside above freezing as well because we're open to the elements. So the difference is, is it's NEMA 3R, it's rain tight. So what we do is we put louver plates on the side. We don't allow any water to, any rain to, to enter into the cabin. Mm -hmm. I get asked all the time, can I get a watertight drive? Which in NEMA standards would be NEMA 4, but drive manufacturers don't package in NEMA 4 as a standard. And the whole reason why is because I can't do what we did there. I can't extend the back, the heat sink out the back and maintain my NEMA 4. So I have to move the entire drive inside the cabinet and I have to cool it. Yeah. So the only thing I can do is we'd have to put not only would we have to put the drive in a NEMA 4 enclosure, but now I have to put a heat exchanger or something on the side of the drive, take the air out of the cabinet, cool it, and then pump it back in. Next problem is that device has to be rated NEMA 3 r So it becomes problematic. And mm -hmm. we do do it, and we have done it, but it's not something that's going to be standard selection. Yeah. And then if you'll take a look at some of these, too, and why we pick, remember I, was I said you really need to know your, your location. It's always good to walk a location before you select a drive. But one of the things you need to know is conduit runs don't necessarily always come in from the top and they don't always come in from the bottom. So you need to be aware. 
These two devices here are both bottom fed. It means you can only come in from the bottom. Mm -hmm. All right, so if your conduits are coming from the ceiling down, you're gonna have to come down along the side and then come up into the bottom. Yeah. With the NEMA 12, we don't have to because I have a surface up here on top that yeah. I can't penetrate. NEMA 3R, you cannot penetrate the top any, because it's Ever. rain tight. And so you never, ever penetrate the top of a NEMA. Because you don't want water pulling on the top of that cabinet and then using that, that penetration as a, as a potential leak. Right, because it will leak. Yeah. And, there, and that's why we never, ever penetrate on the, on the top. We try not to penetrate on the sides, but sometimes you, you have to make sure that you silicone that as well mm -hmm. as you can. You kind of want to ask the question, okay, why do we go to such great lengths? Uh -huh. Okay. Well, every single device has what we call a mean time between failure rate, okay? And so that MTBF rating that Yaskawa has is 28 years. In order for us to get even close to that established, we have to be aware of our environment yeah. that we apply. Because if we don't, as we go ahead and let's say we put this drive into, you know, put this drive into a real dusty enclosure. Well, now what happens is I fill that drive up with particulate it will stick, and it's just like taking your television, wrapping it in a blanket, mm -hmm. throw it in the closet, and turn it on. Tell me how long that TV is going to last. It degrades the life. Haven't tried that one yet, but you know, um, you're not going to notice it for the first five years or so. No. It's going to run just fine. Yep. But you know, post that, say you get ten years out of it, you know, you're only getting half, half, or a third of the life expectancy out of that piece of gear. Right. Yeah. And so what it does is, it, you know, you have payback with the devices. That's the whole reason we apply them. So what you're doing is you're extending your cost of ownership, you know, and you're shortening up the amount of time. Yeah, you most of them are going to pay back in less than two, three years. Yeah. But if you only get two to three years out of it, they should last 28. One of the other biggest thing is, you know, we talked a little bit about ambient conditions and that type of stuff. When you walk your job sites, John made, John mentioned, um, and we talked a little bit about it, is length of lead on the output going to a motor. Without getting into drive theory and that type of stuff, when we get outside that 167 feet, we create a magnetic environment that's not very conducive to motor function. Yeah. And so what we do is we get what we call reflective wave and DVDT, which is high peak voltages, okay? Because we've seen voltage doubling and even voltage tripling. Motor insulation, only good for 12, for 2,000 volts. Sometimes we've seen as much as 2,200 volts in long length of leads in very short duration events, very volatile, but they blow what we call pinholes. And it will shorten the life of your motor at that point in time. So be consistent when you're starting to look at these jobs, make sure that you walk in and you not only notice the environment as far as air quality, temperature, that type of stuff, but also you need to understand where you're gonna mount the drive. How is my power coming in? How far is my drive away from my driven equipment? Yeah. These are all things that you need to be aware of to extend the service life of your drive. You need to know, you need to ask your client. They need to be involved in that decision of where you're gonna locate it because they usually have an opinion and um, the more they know, the better the better they can make a decision. I love talking drives. You taught me so much over the, over the years. Uh, I love it because you don't talk about them as cubes. It's it is an applied piece of gear, and uh, and they are uh, a VFD has so much power to it. You can control so many things through a VFD, and it gives uh, it is such a uh, an advantage if applied correctly. And uh, I love how you teach and train and and uh, and spread the knowledge. So Thank all, you. always fun talking drives with you, Jeff. All right, buddy. Uh, hit that like, hit the subscribe. Uh, come back, check us out on Mechanical Pros, and uh, we'll see you next time.